Hey guys, so do you want to listen to an audio only version of this video? Well, if for some reason you don't want to see our faces and you just only want to hear to the audio version, you can go on to my SoundCloud account. That's where I'm going to be posting some audio stuff on there. And be sure to follow me on SoundCloud because it really does help a lot to have more followers. And so that way, the more followers, the more of the audio stuff I could post for my channel, like convert the stuff I do for my channel make them audio files and just upload them to SoundCloud for those that just want to listen. So thank you so much, you guys. Once again, if you want to listen to the audio-only version of this video, it will be up on SoundCloud. But if you just want to watch our faces and all that stuff, then feel free to continue on watching this video. Thank you so much for your support and enjoy. Hey, what is up, everybody? This is 22 Tiger Dude here. It is that time of the year where we talk about, yes, woo, our top five anticipated movies for the fall winter of 2016. Man, the summer has flown by just like that. So now we're going to be talking about the movies coming out in the fall winter movie season that we're really excited about. Now, of course, I know my guests do a little bit differently, but with me, I just talk about the movies I'm anticipated for. There are movies I'm interested in uh, for sure, but I'm just going to be uh, mentioning the ones that I'm highly anticipated for. Before we do get started, I would love to welcome my guest, Mr. W. Hey, what's up, you guys? WWE Fan 599 here again, and I'm back with my best friends, you know, you've got, you've got Tony, you've got Moosey's, you got, you got Kevin, the Falk, you know, the Falk, the Falk, like an eagle, like the Falk, and, you know, you've got yours truly. I was trying to think. Shut that. up. Anyways, we, and then you got yours truly, of course, Mr. WWE Fan 599, and I'm excited to talk about my top five most anticipated movies of the fall, winter season. What's up, guys? Uh, of course, you know me as Kevin Falk. I've been on Tony's channel numerous times for many of these top 10 videos, and I always love these top 10 videos. They're actually probably some of my favorite videos to do on Tony's channel by far, and I'm really looking forward to uh, getting into this. I top 5, not top 10. Top 5, I fucked it up. Um, top 5, but uh, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, being on this video, and uh, let's get into it. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, so, yes, these are actually um, my favorite this is like the one collaboration that I always just love to do. I'm always really looking forward to doing, doing this uh, around, uh, yeah, three times a year. Um, I love doing these videos, so, and I have, there's a lot of uh, movies that I'm very, I'm looking forward to a lot coming out in this fall slash winter season. I can't wait to talk about uh, them in this video with my very good friends. And uh, let's get the show started. But before we do get into our list, of course, we have some honorable mentions. So, here are my honorable mentions. Alright, so number 12, I have Office Christmas Party. Number 11, although the trailer hasn't come out, Passengers. Number 10, Sully, directed by Clint Eastwood. Um, number 9, Arrival, directed by Denis Villeneuve. That looks really exciting. Number eight, The Accountant. Number seven, Sing. And number six, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. <laughs> hey, I'm so excited for it. There are just five other movies I am a little oh, bit more boy. excited oh, to see. Boy. There, there are just five boy. other movies I'm a little bit more excited to see over boy. Rogue boy. One. All right, well, now that you're done with the shock W, why don't you talk about your honorable mentions? Fucking dang it, where'd the rubber band go? <laughs> Hold on, wait, oh, there it is. Oh, Anyways. Wait, things out. We're only like five minutes in, you've already pissed off W. <laughs> I know. Exactly. All right, all right, my honorable mentions are first being solely, no, it's not an Uncharted movie, um, Blair Witch, Snowden, Mr. Church, the Magnificent Seven, Storks, Deepwater Horizon, Birth of a Nation, The Accountant, uh, Jack Reacher, Never Go Back, A Monster Calls, Ouija Origin of Evil, Arrival, 
Bad Santa 2, Moana, Bleed for This, Passengers, The Match Breaker. Definitely looking forward to this movie. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how Christina Grimmie will do as an actress, being that this is her first and unfortunately last movie as well. But I'm definitely looking forward to seeing it. And it definitely seems like an interesting romantic comedy, although we haven't really seen a trailer. We've just seen some images and stuff, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. I can't wait for it. So yeah, I forgot to mention that, The Matchbreaker. And Sing. So my honorable mentions are as follows, in no particular order. The Light Between Oceans, Blair Witch, The Magnificent Seven, Deepwater Horizon, Miss Peregrine's Home for, for Peculiar Children, Mr. Church, The Girl on the Train, Voyage of Time, Jack Reacher, Never Go Back, Monster Calls, Ouija, Origin of Evil, Inferno, Rings, Hacksaw Ridge, Arrival, Billy Lynn's Halftime Walk. This one's going to piss all of you off, but uh, Trolls, I, I'm, I'm curious, okay? I'm curious. Yeah. Lion, The Edge of Seventeen, Collateral Beauty, Assassin's Creed, Fences, The Founder, The Space Between Us, Patriot's Day, Earth of a Nation, Manchester by the Sea, um, the dressmaker and all, all eyes on me and gold and then my 10 through 6 are as follows uh, number 10 is Sully number 9 is the accountant number 8 is Moana number 7 is bleed for this and number 6 is fantastic beast and where to find them okay so I have five honorable mentions and those are actually my 10 through 6 because uh, I made a top 10 so here we go my number 10 is Sully my number 9 is the accountant my number eight is Manchester by the Sea. My number seven is Patriot's Day. And my number six is Billy Lynn's Long Time Half, uh, Long Half Time Walk. Now let's get into our number five. So my number five is going to be Disney's Moana. I have been a huge fan of Disney for a very long time. Honestly, I think for a lot of people, since they were pretty much little, and uh, Moana, I just look forward to seeing another Disney film that's set around, around Hawaii. Last time we got that was Lilo and Stitch, so that's pretty interesting to me. And although as we are filming this video, the teaser trailer is only released, but just by watching that teaser trailer just gets me excited to see what kind of world Disney's going to be bringing us. I look for I look forward to seeing how Hawaii, Hawaii, excuse me, is going to look in 3D form. Animation for what I saw in that teaser trailer just looks absolutely astonishing. It's going to be so great to see The Rock in a Disney animated film. And the music, the music based on what I saw in the teaser trailer just sounds so beautiful. It just looks like one of those movies that's going to have that Disney magic, just that film that brings the whole entire family together. And I just love the overall concept behind Moana. So that's why Disney's Moana is in my number five spot. At number five, I have Billy uh, Lane's Long Halftime Walk. Um, this looks incredible. Like, really, it really does. Like, I saw that teaser trailer that they released. Man, it was so powerful. Like, I did not expect it to be so, so powerful, that teaser trailer. And they got really an all-star cast for this movie, which is great. You know, they got Kristen Stewart. They got Chris Tucker, my boy. He's coming back. With a vengeance, um, you know, you got Steve Martin, Steve Martin, you know, Chris Tucker and Steve Martin, two people who don't really make movies anymore. They're coming back, people. Well, so well. that's that's just one that's just one reason to be excited for the movie. Then the other, you know, you got Vin Diesel and everything. So yeah, um, Billy Lane's halftime long halftime walk just looks really incredible. I saw the teaser. It just looks like a really powerful movie, and I really hope Ang Lee, Ang Lee. The only time he ever disappointed me was Hulk with 2003. That movie's absolute garbage. But everything else he's done, I've either liked or I've loved. So, I hope Billy Lane's half -time, long halftime walk is another one I enjoy. So, number five is Billy Lane's half long halftime walk. You guys may be surprised by how low this is on the list. But, uh, this to me is number five. I'm still looking forward to this movie, but it's only number five. And that is Doctor Strange on... Um, I have definitely been looking forward to this for a long time now for a couple of reasons. Mainly because I think it's way different than anything Marvel's done previously. I know the story's been told before in an animated film. I haven't seen it, but 
I think we can all agree this is by far the best cast Marvel's ever had. No matter how good the movie is, this is going to be hands down the best cast I've ever had. As Michelson, as the villain, Rachel McAdams, Tilda Swinton, I mean, just such an awesome caster. I think they're all going to give really great performances. I love the concept. I love the character of Doctor Strange. It's about time Ben and Cumberbatch have, like, a major um, franchise. I know he has Sherlock, but I mean, like, a movie franchise. It's about time he has one. I think he's going to do... I know he was in The Hobbit as well, but, you know, as a main star, I think Star Trek. An awesome job here. I can't wait to see what he does. Um, he's going to be amazing. And then, like I said, Matt Michelson is a villain. He literally can do no wrong. He literally can. I cannot ever see him give a bad performance. We know what he can do in Casino Royale as a villain. Of course, we know what he can do in Hannibal. He's going to be fantastic in this. Total Swin looks great, too. Chiwetel Ejiofor looks like he's having a lot of fun, and Rachel McAdams looks really good. Overall, I think it's going to be a really great movie. I can't wait for it. I'm sure it's going to be fun as well, even though they haven't really shown... Well, they've shown some of the fun, but it's been mainly dark trailers. I think it's going to be really great, though. It's a great concept for Marvel. I can't wait for it, and definitely hype. So, Doctor Strange, that is why it is my number five. So, my number five is The Birth of a Nation. Now, if you guys don't know, The First Birth of a Nation is the most controversial film of all time, and I find it so interesting and fascinating that they're going to make a mainstream remake in today's time of this film. Um, and uh, I've heard just amazing things about this movie. I've heard it's it's like incredibly powerful, amazing performances. Everyone's saying it's probably going to be Best Picture at the Oscars, which I'm pretty sure it will be because you know the whole diversity type thing. This is obviously, if you don't know the story of Birth of a Nation, it's about slavery and other stuff. Um, and I just think, I haven't seen any trailers. I have not, but the reason I'm so looking forward to this is because there's so much hype around this movie. And um, the fact that, again, as I said, they're making a remake of the most controversial film of all time, I just think is very risky and very daring. Um, and, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to this movie. I'm hoping it's powerful, as, as powerful as I've heard it is. I can't wait to go check this out, and that is why it is my number five. All right, so my number four is going to be Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk, directed by Ang Lee. Wow, the teaser trailer is absolutely one of the best teaser trailers I've seen in 2016. That teaser trailer just screamed powerful and beautiful, and the music playing throughout that entire teaser trailer. Just wow. That's just the definition of a teaser chair that blew me away. Ang Lee is a very talented director, and the cast, like what WWE fans said, you have Chris Tucker and Steve Martin, who haven't made a movie in like four to five years. I think Chris, T Chris Tucker's last time was Silver Lines Playbook. And Steve Martin, his last film was technically Home, but that was an animated film. La life action-wise, you haven't seen Steve Martin since the big year, which was five years ago. So I am definitely looking forward to seeing, um, you know, the return. And I just also love that we see Vin Diesel and then you have Kristen Stewart. Um, you know, we see the flashback through the soldier's eyes of like what happened during the war because people are like celebrating his victory, like what he has done. But there's something behind it that just that's just making him feel very discouraged. So I really look forward to how this movie is going to tell that story. And it's a movie that just truly looks something so fascinating. So that's why it had to be in my number four spot. All right, coming in at number four for your boy here is a movie. We're going to go back to the Wizarding World because my number four is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I love the Harry Potter series. It's one of my all-time favorite movie series. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I thought I was a bit worried about this at first because I felt like that they were doing this way too soon. It felt like they were doing a spinoff way too soon, in my opinion. I think they should have waited a few more years. But after seeing all these trailers and stuff, I'm like, this looks really interesting. I'm really excited for this movie. And it really does seem like we're going to go back to the Wizarding World and they're going to really take us back into that universe of Harry Potter again. So I'm just very, very excited for this movie. I love the cast that they got behind this movie. You know, you got A. Redmayne, you got Colin Farrell. And it's just, it looks great. And it definitely seems like they're going to capture the spirit once again of Harry Potter. And I'm very excited for very, for uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. So that comes in at number four. Okay, my number four is actually Snowden. I remember this was supposed to be coming out last year. And finally, it's now coming out. 
Um, I'm a little bit worried because of that, the fact that it's taking so long to come out, but I'm also really excited because the cast here is just so stellar between Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Shane Lee Woodley and Nick Cage is in there. And also that it's Oliver Stone's first movie in a while. In fact, this was the first, I don't know if you guys know this, but it was actually his first Comic-Con this year. He's never been at Comic-Con and finally he's oh, wow. made a movie where he can be at Comic-Con, so I think that's really cool. But even the concept, I mean, the fact you have Edward Snowden, a man that they, I believe, still haven't been able to find, and they're still after him and things like that. I think it's just a really interesting concept of this guy that, you know, he took all these different identities and things like that. I think that's going to be really cool. I think definitely, does it look Oscar baity a little bit? I haven't actually seen any of the trailers. Really the only trailer I've seen is the teaser. So that alone made me excited. I'm definitely looking forward to this movie, though. I've been looking forward to it for a while. And I really hope it is not this year's Black Mask, because you guys know how I felt with that. I don't hate Black Mask. Obviously, I have the poster, so I like that movie. But it did let me down a little bit, and I'm hoping that, that Snowden isn't like that, where it doesn't let me down. I hope it is a very good movie, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing uh, how this finally turns out. So my number four is The Founder. Now, this is a movie that was actually my number two in uh, the top five uh, summer movies of this year, but it got pushed back to a limited release in January uh, to contend in the uh, Oscar uh, season. Now, as I said in uh, that uh, video, um, I'm really looking forward to this movie. Um, I think the story is very interesting. The cast and the acting just looks fantastic. Um, looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, but also uh, very, you know, interesting and very insightful at the same time. And just seeing, you know, like the birth of McDonald's, basically. Um, obviously, I don't eat fast food, but I still kind of find stuff like this interesting. And uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be interesting to see um, how they handle this. And uh, Michael Keaton is a fantastic actor. He's been knocking out of the part lately, Birdman, Spotlight, all great movies. And uh, yeah, so overall, I'm just really looking forward to this uh, movie, and I can't to check it out in January when it goes wide. And hopefully, uh, I get a few Oscar nominations. Uh, my number four is The Founder. So my number three is Doctor Strange. Oh my goodness, this movie looks epic. I told this to WWE fan, and I know I just finished mentioning this when he and I talked about the San Diego Comic Con trailer for it in our t in our trailer review that we did for this channel, how it, this is basically Marvel's Inception when you really look into it. And I wouldn't be surprised, like what he pointed out in that trailer review, if Marvel maybe even took some inspirations from Inception because just of how beautiful and how familiar some of the imagery really looks. This is definitely a different movie for Marvel and it's always cool when Marvel can always take, the, they could take all of these superheroes but turn to something different and while it turns something different, they could still be very fun and very entertaining movies because that's what these movies are all about. They're all about being very entertaining. And I think Ben Dick Cumberbatch, he could really nail Doctor Strange very well. Rachel McAdams is also in there. Tilda Swinton as Doctor Strange's trainer is in there. There's a lot of really talented people in Doctor Strange. And just visually, it looks amazing. I can't wait to see where they take this film. I get more excited the more I think about Doctor Strange. So that's why it has to be my number three spot because I am pumped for this movie. Okay, my number three is Inception 2. Oh, wait, no, wait, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, what? Oh, oh, Doctor Strange, yes, Doctor <laughs> Strange. Uh, it's only a joke, people, yes, I can, I, dang it. Anyways, Doctor Strange. Actually, that was awful. Don't, don't even put that in the video. Put that in the bloopers. That was, that we'll was. will put it in the video. I know, Tony, he will put that in the video. I will admit. I know some things about this character. I don't know everything about this character, but there are some things I do know about this character. And I'm very excited that when I heard he was getting his own movie, I was like, oh, cool, they're going to do a Doctor Strange movie. This shall be interesting. And then they cast Bandit Cumberbatch. I was like, perfect. And I saw the teaser trail, loved it. Saw the uh, Comic-Con trail, loved it even more. Okay, this movie looks awesome. And it just looks very mind-bending as well. And I knew this with Doctor Strange. I knew it was going to be weird. It was going to be, no pun intended, but strange. And just very out there. And it definitely seems like that. And it just looks awesome. And I cannot wait for Doctor Strange. It just, 
it's so it just looks so great i cannot wait for this movie i'm so excited for doctor strange definitely looks like it's gonna have some mind-bending sequences maybe some of the best sequences we'll see all year so my number three is doctor strange my number three, you might be surprised that it's this low, but my number three, without a doubt, is Rogue One, a Star Wars story, whatever you want to call it. What's actually pretty funny is that when I when we did our list last year, I put Star Wars Force Awakens the exact same spot as this. I just find that kind of funny. But anyways, I'm not judging this as a Star Wars movie. I'm really not, because you're not supposed to. It's supposed to be its own separate thing, and I think that's really what it is here. We're getting a legit war movie. And yes, okay, Star Wars, I know that, but... This really is telling the story of what was going on outside the story of Star Wars. You know, what else was going on? I think it's very interesting. I think Felicity Jones is going to be really good here. And again, you have a really good cast of, like, Matt, Matt Michelson. Again, he's going to do a great job. The only thing he does here, the cast in general, I think really does look fantastic. Uh, Forrest Whitaker, he has that great line in the trailer. And, of course, Darth Vader coming back in this movie. I think it's awesome. The fact that they got James Earl Jones back, I can't wait to see what he does here. I hope I... I swear to God, I really hope they don't fuck it up like they did Revenge of the Sith and he has that terrible no line. I hope they don't do something shitty like that. I doubt they will, but I really hope they don't. Um, but anyways, I can't wait for this. I really do hope that Lightning does strike twice and this is just as great as Force Awakens. I love The Force Awakens. I hope this is just as great. And I really feel that we could be starting a new trend here of just different kinds of Star Wars movies. You don't need a new Star Wars movie, but you can do something that's in the same universe like this movie. And I think that's something you're going to be doing very well. Can't wait for Rogue One, and that is why it is my number three. So my number three is Bleed for this. Now, this was actually my most anticipated uh, uh, movie of last year, but it never came out um, for some reason, and I don't know why, but it's finally coming out uh, this uh, fall slash winter season, and I'm so excited for this movie. This movie looks powerful, emotional. Miles Teller really looks like he's going to give a never stellar performance in this movie and really show all his emotional range as an actor like he did in Whiplash, which Whiplash is one of my favorite movies of all time. And yeah, so I'm really looking forward to this. I find that I think this story is very interesting. It looks like a movie that you're really going to root for the characters. And yeah, so I'm overall looking really forward to Bleed for this, and that is why it is my number three. All right, so my number two is something magical. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Dang it, Tony. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eden, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Whoa, I'm on a roller coaster. I'm really excited for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I really enjoy the Harry Potter movies. Huge fan of the movies. And, you know, I've grown up with them for these past, like, what, 10 years that they've been going on. And it's been five years since Deathly Hollows Part 2 came out. So pretty cool how we're getting a spinoff or prequel, whatever you want to call it, five years after Deathly Hollows Part 2. And I look forward to seeing what they can do with this. And I do have hope that this could be a really good film because, one, David Yates is directing this film. Yes, Legend of Tarzan was a misstep. You're going to always have your missteps. Shut but up. I do think, just my opinion, but nice. I do I do. I do think David Yates could do something better with Fantastic Beasts, and I believe you got J.K. Rowling writing the script for yes, Fantastic Beasts. So, um, I know that actually. yeah, yeah, she's actually in control for this film. Eddie Redmayne, you know, he looks like he'll be great in the role. You'll also have Colin Farrell, and then Dan Fogler, who I have not seen in a long, long time. So. You honestly have a really great cast here and a really talented director, a really talented writer, and it looks like it'll be something magical that we're known for, but it looks like it could be like its own thing at the same time, which is honestly very refreshing to see. And I love me some magic movies, so... Um, I yeah. thought you were going to say I love me some magic, Mike. Oh my god. <laughs> I, just... I thought he was going to say magic mushrooms. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, God damn it, Kevin. But yes, for that reason, uh, I'm excited for this movie and it is my number two. I love me that uh that Shannon Tatum dick. I love I love Magic Mike. I love it. Shut up, Kevin. So coming in at number two for me is a movie based on a video game. A video game series that I, I've actually enjoyed, even though I've only played two in the series. But anyways, that is Assassin's Creed. This Looks like we could finally have the first great, great, let me 
let me rephrase that, great video game movie. Yes, we've had some good ones and some de decent ones and some really awful ones, but I think that this could be the first great video game movie. I mean, you got stellar cast. You've got Michael Fassbender. You've got Mo Marion Cotillard. you got Jeremy Irons. You know, so... And the visual, and like, the style of the movie looks great. Like, I love just the production design and just how the movie looks. Like, the costume design just looks fantastic with this movie. I love the costume design with the film, especially with Michael Fassbender's suit. It's very accurate to the video game, which I actually really appreciate as well. And, you know... And yes, I have played the video games. Unlike with Warcraft earlier this year, I actually have played the games. I played Assassin's Creed 2 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. And they're both great games, especially 2. 2 is one of the best video game sequels. Seriously, play it. And this movie just looks great. I'm very, very excited for this movie. I have really high expectations for this movie. I, I really do. I'm very excited. So that's why it comes out at number 2 for me. Okay. So my number two and number one are honestly kind of interchangeable, I'm not going to lie. I think both of these movies are ones I've really been looking forward to. Um, the only reason that this is number two is because I'm looking for number one, I'm looking forward to number one just a bit more than that one, by literally just a margin more, marginally more. Um, but my number two is one I think you guys will be a little bit surprised by, but my number two, without a doubt, is Passengers. I have been looking forward to this movie for a very long time now. I remember I heard the concept way back when the script was leaked. I remember I watched a video by Movie Bug, I think her name is. She did a whole video about it, and it really just sounds incredible. You know, this guy wakes up on Earth, there's no one else there, and he decides to wake someone else up, played by Jennifer Lawrence. And Chris Pine and Jennifer Lawrence, that's a different kind of pairing that we haven't really seen before, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they are. Jennifer Lawrence is someone I think that has really good chemistry with anyone. She's just one of those kind of actresses, so I think she's going to obviously do a great job. Also has her first sex scene in this, so that should be interesting to see. And the concept in general I think just sounds really interesting. And also the fact that the person that's uh, directing this is uh, the person directing this, I believe, what's his name? Morton Tildum is uh, the one directing this. He did The Imitation Game, and I really did love The Imitation Game. I think it's going to have a really good story to it. It is going to be like sci-fi and things like that, but I think it's also going to have a nice, really romantic story, and I think the chemistry is going to be really good. Hopefully something I can get behind, um, and hopefully something that isn't cheesy or rushed. And I heard the script was really good. I'm thinking they're going to change a couple details because of the fact that uh, the script was leaked, so I'm assuming that's going to happen. <laughs> Tony, what the fuck? But anyway... Um, I'm definitely looking forward to Passengers. I think it looks fantastic, and I, I can't keep my, I, I can't keep a straight face, and I'm having a hard time, so I'm just gonna say that is my number two. Kaden, what is your number two? I, I, I'm gonna, like, fucking burst out laughing. What is your number two? I'm sorry, I had to. You can't wait until afterwards. Crying, goddamn boy. Okay, then it's a boy. That's all I'm gonna be thinking about now. So my number two is La La Land. Now the main reason that I am so excited for this movie is that Whiplash is one of my favorite movies of all time. And Damien, Damien Chazelle is directing this movie. It's a second uh, feature film, and I, I'm so excited for this movie. It, it's a musical. I love musicals. The cast is gr great. Um, now, the teaser um, itself really reminds me of like, a classic Hollywood film. And the way the movie shot reminds, uh, reminds me um, a lot of Whiplash in some ways, but it also looks very clean, like a you know, Hollywood film would be. Um, and overall, this is going to be, I think, I think that Birth of a Nation. He's not the main um, Oscar uh, contender right now. I think this is it. Um, I think this movie that the Academy is going to like die uh, for, and Whiplash got a lot of lot of love. So I think it's definitely going to get into that race, and just oh, and so that's all. I've never reason to look forward to it. And just overall, I, I can't wait for this movie. Um, and I overall, I just I'm very excited for this movie. And the reason why a movie I love like a movie like Hail Caesar, the reason why I love the movie so much is because of, of that classic Hollywood feel, which I'm hoping that La La Land has. Uh, there's just so many things going for it, and I'm really hoping it does not disappoint me. And that is why La Land is, is my number two. All 
All right, guys. So, my number one movie of the fall winter 2016, WWE Friends Gonna Kill Me. La la land. La 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 Okay, if you guys don't know, I'm not looking forward to this movie. I know, I'm in the I'm in the way, way minority with this, but I'm not looking forward to this movie in the slightest bit. <laughs> he has this over Star Wars. He doesn't put Star Wars on the first with this. Now, fun little fact. The trailer for this movie actually released on my birthday. And what... That was a hell of a way to end my birthday. You know, I got out of my screening for Lights Out because I got to go to my screen for Lights Out on my birthday. And then after that, I come home to this trailer. I click on this trailer and I was just blown away by it. And I love this trailer so much that I literally spent the rest of the night watching that trailer like 30 more times. I am not joking. I saw it 30 that times. That was last year. La La Land, like what um, Muzi's just said right now, it is from the same writer and director, Damien Chazelle, who also directed Whiplash, an excellent film. And I really just look forward to seeing how he can handle a musical film because I know me and a certain someone else that appreciates the musical genre. Who's that? I wonder who that is. Who's that? I, I know. Me too. Me too. Oh, you know, I can't think of him. But yeah, as someone that really appreciates the musical genre, La La Land just looks like the film for me. Plus, you have Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone reuniting because, you know, they worked in Crazy Stupid Love together. And I thought they had amazing chemistry in Crazy Stupid Love. I look forward to see that chemistry carry on in La La Land. The movie looks beautiful. Music just sounds so amazing and magical. That's the other thing about this film. It just looks so magical. And the movie's portrayal of Hollywood looks very interesting to me. So this is indeed my number one anticipated movie for the rest of the year, as well as the fall, winter, 2016. I'm sorry, WWE fan, but this movie has me hyped like you have no idea. So my number one is Rogue One Star Wars Story. Rogue One Star Wars Story. Rogue One Star Wars Story. Okay, it, it's pretty obvious by now. Okay. Okay. Saying that I love Star Wars is an understatement, okay? <laughs> we all know I love this franchise to death. So Really? I thought you I thought you hated it. I know, right? But <laughs> but anyways, yes, Rogue One, a Star Wars story is without a doubt my most anticipated movie of the fall winter season and of the rest of the year because okay, at first I I liked the teaser trailer that they released beforehand. That was good. Didn't really blow my mind as well. The second trailer, I was like, it's fine, but but guess what? I watched it more and more and more and for some reason I loved it each more time like more times I watched that trailer. I was like, wow, I really love this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have you ever had that feeling? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's happened to me plenty of times. I and I'm just like, I was just blown away. I just I'm so excited for this movie. It it just looks so different and just so incredible. Like like what you guys said, it looks like a war movie. Like it looks like a legitimate war movie set in space. And I'm just so excited for this movie. It just looks fantastic. It really does. And you know, Sure, it's going to be a tough act to follow with The Force Awakens, but I definitely do think Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, will be an excellent, excellent Star Wars movie. And then, of course, my boy. My boy's back. My boy's back. My favorite Star Wars character of all time, and the, to me, the greatest movie character of all time is back. My boy, Darth Vader. He's back. I don't care if we just saw the back of his head for five seconds, okay? That was the best five seconds of my life, okay? That was just incredible. So yeah, Rogue One Star Wars Story, without a doubt, is my most anticipated movie of the fall, winter season, and of the rest of the year. I'm just so pumped for this movie that I, I, I just I just feel I just feel like running through the wall right now. I, that's how pumped I am for this movie. I'm so excited for this movie. Like seriously, I'm gonna be there day one. I'm gonna sit my butt in the theater. I'm gonna enjoy myself. My soul's gonna jump out of my body once I see this movie because that's how incredible it looks. So yeah. And once I see Darth Vader, I'm going to pee my pants, okay? Because Darth Vader is just that awesome, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> what what am I doing? Okay, number one, Star Wars, Rogue One. There you go. I think by what Tony said, and if you guys have seen my videos, you pretty much know 
what my favorite genre is and the kind of stuff I'm into and also my name on Instagram that should take into account as well. My number one is without a doubt La La Land. I mean when I heard about this movie, when I heard it was coming out, I immediately was interested. Because here's the thing. Even though the movie's a musical, that's not the main reason looking forward to it. It's mainly because this movie has all the ingredients you need to make a great film. You have Ryan Gosling, one of the best actors I think working today by far, alongside Emma Stone, one of the best female actresses working today, and really great in universally everything. And you have Damien Chazelle, who of course did Whiplash, and he was incredible with that, and he just knocked it out of the park in that movie, and there were so many great things about that, and there's literally, and then you have this, between the incredible cinematography and all the music, I mean, this just looks like an incredible movie, and like I said, it has all the ingredients to make a great film. I don't even know what the plot of this movie really is, because the trailer didn't exactly say it, and you know what, I'm perfectly fine with that. If we just have that teaser, and know the trailers are released, I'd be fine with that. I know there are going to be other shows that are going to be released, but I would honestly be fine if we just had that teaser. That teaser alone is enough to get me excited because it looks like a classic 50s musical, something like Singing in the Rain or something like, say, any Gene Kelly film or any Fred Astaire film. It really looks like they're trying to throw back to those kind of films, and I love those kind of films. Why? Because they're not made like that today. Movies are not made like that anymore. I mean, if you just see, there's a certain type of not innocence, innocence is kind of the word, but also efforts. There's type of effort and type of innocence that are put into those movies that just aren't really putting into it today. And I really feel like they're trying to do that with this, and I definitely get that vibe from it. I really hope this works. I hope the songs don't feel arbitrary or like they just don't mix in there. I really hope they work out very well. I am so looking forward to this. I have been looking forward to it ever since I heard about it. That is my number one, and uh, yeah. So my number one is a movie that I am so excited for, but yet I'm also kind of worried about it. I'll explain later, though. Um, if you know me, you know that uh, my favorite genre of music is hip-hop. Um, my main passion is uh, for music, and I just love the genre of hip-hop so much. I listen to it every day. And obviously, one of the, the biggest figures of all time in hip-hop is Tupac. So if you haven't figured it out by now, my number one is All Eyes on I Me. Forgot. I forgot about this movie. If you guys haven't figured it out by now, my number one is All Eyes Me, which is the Tupac uh, biopic that is coming out. Um, I am so excited for this movie, but at the same time, I'm worried. The reason why I'm worried is that Notorious, it didn't work out so well. Um, I know that the actor who played uh, the, uh, Biggie in the movie is going to have a cameo in this. Um, and overall, it really seems like, from what I've been hearing about this movie, they're really trying to do a really good job with this movie. They're trying to you know, really respect and really understand who Tupac Shakur really was as a person. And yeah, and I'm really hoping that's also really dark and gritty and just really, sh like, um, is or has a really, like, investing story and they really handle the story well. Um, obviously I love Tupac. Um, and I'm just hoping that they do this well. But also at the same time, I'm very excited for it because, you know, it's to do hip-hop, it's the Tupac. And yeah, and I also hope it also, you know, also explores, you know, some of the drama, you know, had in his, you know, life, you know, other rap parts, you know, big and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm just really hoping this is a great movie and that is why All Eyes on Me is my number one. Well, you guys, that is our top five anticipated movies for fall, winter 2016. This is yet another great video. I always love doing these with you guys. So, you guys, of course, I would love to thank my lovely guest stars, WWE fan 0599. Well, thank you, uh, 22 Tiger Dude, for letting me come on once again to do one of these top five videos. Cause man, I have so much fun doing these videos. Cause honestly, they're they're my favorite videos. Besides the Q and A's, these are some of my favorite videos that I do with you. These are a lot of fun to do and a lot of fun to make. So yeah, thank you for letting me come on once again. Anytime, man. Thank you, Kevin Falk, for joining. Of course, uh, usual stuff. Got pissed off at people, you know, laughed at things that uh, were fucking hilarious. And now Moosey's is giving me the death stare, so I'm going to stop talking because you're me out. Okay. And thank you very much, Moosey's, for joining. Thank you again, Tony. I really have fun doing these videos. And, uh, yeah, see ya. And of course, you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what are your top five anticipated movies of fall, winter, 2016. And also, if you guys just happen to be listening to this from SoundCloud, thank you so much for listening, uh, for listening to this from SoundCloud as well. So this is 22 Tiger Dude here with WWE fan Kevin Folk and Moosey's. And don't forget that all of us will always have... 
Okay, 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 okay. Don't. You're gonna break people's. You're gonna break people's eardrums with that. Jesus. <laughs> Peace out, world. I'm good. Let's just say when me, Kevin Falk, Moosies, and WWE fan filmed it, Adam Haskell unfortunately had internet issues. So here is the version where Adam Haskell will give you his uh, top five anticipated.